Okay, so we, we were comparing this one and this one, and you guys thought this one had a bigger area. Volume. Volume, sorry. Now let's compare this one and this one. So what do you think um, between those two? I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to zoom now this one and this one, actually. Oh. Hmm. I'm going to try to zoom in as much as I can, but things will get a little fuzzy. I think this one, again, will have more volume for, okay. this, for the same reason. All right. Yeah. Maybe three of them together, more will be sticking out than this one here. Okay. And then, so this is this one has four layers. This one has eight. This one has sixteen. Uh, and it's already looking kind of fuzzy on the on the camera. But but that's okay because this one has thirty-two layers, and it's hard to even see them with our own eyes. You can sort of feel them. Yeah. Like it's not smooth, right? Yeah. All right, so which one, um, this one compared to this one, do you think has the most volume? This one. All right. For the same reason that we've been using. Okay, so which of uh, the four do you think has the largest volume? The first one. Yeah, this one here. Okay, which one do you think has the least volume? This uh, one over here. Okay. But the volume that you're taking out seems to get less and less and less each time. Oh, what do you mean by that? I mean, like this, between here, and here, you can like tell that it's a different shape. Okay. Between here and here, I mean, you can sort of tell. And then here and here, it's it's just getting harder and harder to tell that it's actually a different shape. Yeah. Yeah, so eventually it becomes um, a perfect pyramid. And the perfect pyramid, let's just say our green one is a perfect pyramid. Um, it has the least area out of all of them. Volume. Sorry, least mm -hmm. volume. Sorry. Same area. Uh, and the interesting thing about um, about these, I'm going to take the black background away because our other um, pyramids just happen to be black. The interesting thing when you have the perfect pyramid, what happens? How do they, they fit, fit together, together to make a perfect cube, but in the exact same way that our approximations fit together. Yeah, and the approximations were decidedly not a cube, right? No, they have this little protrusion. And more than that. What else is not? Well, also they're not a cube, even if you take away the protrusion. Why? Because it's you, here. It's three by four. It's three by three by four here. Yeah. If you even if you take away the extra protrusion on the top, it's still not a cube. Hmm. But eventually, that extra bit just doesn't matter that much. Yeah. yeah. And so the reason then I wanted to show you this is this is kind of the idea from calculus about how you. Uh, can approximate shapes, complicated shapes like a pyramid, say, with shapes that you understand, which is like, in this case, stacking sort of boxes together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you get, as you make the boxes smaller, your approximations to your other shape get better and better. And in this particular instance, we can tell that the volume of these pyramids is one third the volume of a cube. Yeah. Without mm -hmm. any, um, without any um, geometric formulas at all, because why? They fit together to form a cube. Because three of them fit together to form a cube. So the last part I, uh, uh, I want to talk about in this project, we're going to go upstairs to the computer, and I'm going to show you how I made these, because there's actually some pretty interesting math behind how I made these anyway. So in addition to into the calculus idea, so let's go upstairs. <laughs> 